So in my hands, I have the Bose Smart Soundbar and the Bose Smart Soundbar 600. And if you're wondering which one is which, it's really hard to tell. You gotta look at the tag to make sure if do I have the 600 in my hand or do I have this Bose Smart Soundbar in my hand. But the true story about what Bose is doing is that Bose is focusing more on software. So here you see that the hardware is basically identical. They both have the same five speakers. Both the Bose 600 and the Bose Smart Soundbar are gonna feature Dolby Atmos. And that means they are including these top fire speakers two on top and there's going to be a center channel as well as two side channels both one on each side and that's going to be identical on both the 600 and the smart soundbar and sadly Bose instead of innovating new products has been focusing on new colors like sandstone moonstone blue and lunar blue and but that doesn't really help us when we're looking at soundbars because these guys really only come in white black and maybe a silver but I'll be surprised if Bose is not adding in some type of titanium or platinum or whatever color they're coming up with next for their soundbar lineup now if we go over the specs for your Bose smart soundbar the smart soundbar will come with two mics. It's going to weigh 6.9 pounds. It's going to be 2.2 by 27.34, so 27 inches across and 4 inches deep. So that's the entire dimensions of your smart soundbar. It's going to be coming with Bluetooth 5.0 and it has five speakers inside. So it doesn't come with the new Bluetooth, a five Bluetooth 5.3, but you will have Bluetooth 5.0, which gives you about 25, maybe 30 feet of range between your phone or your Bluetooth device and your soundbar. The soundbars will be able to use Apple AirPlay 2, Chromecast, Spotify Connect, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. But then ultimately, what is the difference between the Smart Soundbar 600 and the Smart Soundbar? And honestly, it's not a lot because it really comes down to software. There's no real hardware differences here. So the Bose Smart Soundbar is coming with something called AI Dialog Mode. And according to Bose, and this is Bose's own words, and I quote, automatically senses when dialogue is occurring and adjusts the tonal balance to improve the clarity of spoken words in all content without sacrificing immersive elements and effects. So that's kind of luxury language for basically the AI will boost the dialogue so that you can hear the spoken word better and the conversations better, which depends on what's playing on the screen. So then it's not really changing the background music and effects, not that much, but it can change the dialogue dynamically based on what's playing. So the best example of that is like, let's say I'm watching Spider-Man on my television and I wanna hear what Peter Parker is saying, I wanna hear what Doc Ock is saying, but I don't wanna lose out on all the crashes and the bashes and the explosions and the punches. I don't want to miss out on that. So what the Bose soundbar is going to do is that when something is, you know, those action scenes, it's going to keep everything the same. But once Peter Parker starts talking, even if he's in the middle of fighting Dr. Ock, well, it's going to be able to adjust itself so that you're going to be able to hear the words of what Peter's saying better than if you just had the regular Bose 600 soundbar right here. And honestly, why is AI dialogue important? It's because clear dialogue is one of the biggest reasons why people get sound bars because a lot of us will think that oh well people just want more bass they want to feel the feel the scene better or make it more cinematic and that's true and that kind of software upgrade is similar to what Bose did with the Bose QC Ultra headphones because they added the immersive audio on the QC Ultras. And that's really the big change between the Bose QC Ultra and the regular QC headphones. But was it enough? Because as someone who has reviewed the Bose QC Ultra headphones and has a very popular YouTube review about why you should not buy them, so that immersive audio has been somewhat of a software gimmick. So it's gonna be quite interesting. I'm gonna let you judge for yourself if AI dialogue really does work well and is it different from what you get on the Bose 600 relative to the smart soundbar. Now the second upgrade they give the smart soundbar is that the smart soundbar can be paired with the open earbuds that you see here. Now the open earbuds can be paired with your smart soundbar so that the open earbuds are going to act as a rear surround speaker setup. So that ultimately it's going to be mirroring a 5.0 speaker setup without a subwoofer that you have the smart soundbar and then you have the rear speakers already connected to your ears. So what are the drawbacks of being able to pair your Bose Ultra open earbuds with your Bose smart soundbar? Well really it's that you can only use one open earbud at a time, they can't be two. So if you're watching it by yourself, that's great. But if you have a friend over or you have your family, well, no one's gonna be able to enjoy it except for the person who has the single pair of open earbuds that can be paired with the South Smart Soundbar. The other thing is that if you're looking for a true 5.1 home theater setup or a 5.0 home theater setup where you have your rear channels, your center channels and your side channels, you won't really be getting that if you have just the Bose Ultra opens inside of your ears. 
what you want to do is just invest inside of getting some rear channel speakers, like the Bose speakers that are going to be paired wirelessly with your smart soundbar, because it's going to sound more authentic and it's going to envelop the room while here it's really for solo use. And honestly, if you're using your earbuds for rear channel, you're probably going to be using these just to watch everything instead of using your soundbar anyway. So because the Bose Ultra Opens are pretty expensive at 299 MSRP, well, honestly, is it a really a good deal to get these over just getting rear channel speakers for your home theater setup? I probably would go with the home theater speakers. So next let's talk about Dolby Atmos because there's a lot of competition in this space from Polk, Sony, LG, Samsung, and multiple audio brands. And the Bose Smart Soundbar, as well as the Smart Soundbar 600, it really uses these two top firing speakers here so that it can bounce off the those acoustic waves off reflective surfaces in your room to deliver that Atmos experience. And because these speakers are pretty small, I mean, you look at them right here, they're pretty small and they're just top firing, it's not gonna sound as dynamic as other systems, at least that are dedicated 5.1 or 7.1 Dolby Atmos systems. But because if you look at the price, a lot of those systems are gonna be priced pretty close to what you would get just if you got the soundbar on its own. Because when you compare the Magnify from Polk, which has this small center channel looking soundbar, and you compare it to the bigger Bose, you're wondering how does this compare to that using Atmos? But the secret is, is that Polk is giving you the subwoofer, and the subwoofer just has so much more dynamic range, even if this Bose here comes with very good woofers built inside already. And that means there's a sound difference in terms of quality unless you go the extra mile and invest in the base module for your smart speaker here. And what Bose recommends is that if you want more bass, you can always add one of their Bose wireless base modules that you see here. This is the 700. This is gonna be way heavier than what you get with the 500, but both are gonna be delivering very powerful subwoofer sound because there is a very powerful subwoofer inside. Another secret of pairing it with the Bose base module with your Bose system is that it's wireless, it's gonna be seamless, and it will just be like pairing headphones inside of your Bose app. We can't forget that Bose already has the Bose SimpleSync, which allows you to connect your Bose headphones easily to your soundbar so that you don't want to disturb anyone, you don't want your soundbar playing anything. Well, just listen to everything on your headphones and then you just connect it via wireless Bluetooth to your television via your soundbar itself. So now that we explained the differences between the Bose Smart Soundbar 600 and the Bose Smart Soundbar, well, let's let you hear the difference in terms of that AI dialogue. Let's compare it to the Bose TV speaker, which is gonna be their value speaker. Now, the great thing about having the eARC is that setup of your soundbar with your television, it really just takes seconds. So I just plugged it in. Now my Smart Soundbar is on and it's gonna work right out of the box. In time, you will know what it's like to lose. In time. You will know what it's like to lose. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. Okay, so after having watched and listened to multiple movies as well as TV shows using the AI dialogue and not using the AI dialogue, for me personally, I feel like you're better off not using the AI dialogue and just increasing the center channel so that the dialogue is still gonna be a little bit more crisp. The AI dialogue is gonna make everything sound a little bit crisper, but I think it comes at a cost because it's not gonna sound as authentic. And it kinda sounds sometimes like a little bit AI boosted and it sounds a little bit irregular because it just doesn't fit in with what maybe the director was intending because the voices are overpowering, which is gonna be good for some people. And I know some people are like, well, I really wanna hear what they say. So in that case, the AI dialogue is gonna be useful, but not as useful as just increasing the center channel all the way. Here, the software, the AI is trying to make it clearer the best it can, but because audio is just so dynamic, especially if you have a lot of things going on, it can sound a little bit irregular, especially if there's a lot going on in the scene. So just by boosting the voices, it's not good enough. It's hard to pinpoint the voice inside of all of that audio. So then they do boost up a lot of the mids and the highs to make it brighter anyway. So I just think if you wanna hear the voices better, increase the center channel. And then if you really, really find that you can't hear it, then press AI dialogue on.
All the controls for your Bose Smart Soundbar can be done inside of the Bose app. And remember that the Smart Soundbar will also come with a remote, but because there's no display on the soundbar itself, it's hard to see what your remote is doing. Now on the soundbar EQ, the height channel is the one that you're going to really be focusing on as well as the bass, because those are going to be allowing you to increase as well as improve the Atmos sound inside of your soundbar. And if you improve the bass, it really does make a difference. But for treble and center channel, I think that's gonna be better for spoken word. <laughs> So what is our verdict on the Bose Smart Soundbar? I think it's a good soundbar if it was less expensive because MSRP here is $499, just like what we saw on the Bose Smart Soundbar 600. And if the Bose Smart 600, if you can get this for $299 or $300 versus $500 on the Bose Smart Soundbar, I would 100% recommend getting the 600 over the Smart Soundbar. There's just not a big of a difference in that AI dialogue, as well as having that personal surround with the Bose Ultra Opens that make it worthwhile to spend 200 more dollars. Because remember, you gotta buy the Bose Ultra Opens if you wanna use personal surround. So that's another $300 there. So in terms of budget, I think the 600 is the better way to go. And honestly, because there's no difference in the sound quality, it's almost the same exact product. And that's what we have to remember. Bose isn't reinventing the wheel here. They're just changing the name and adding some software because they're trying to catch up to the likes of Sony, Sonos, and Apple, and others who have just been racing past them in terms of just audio quality, features, innovation, as well as design. So I think Bose is going in the right direction. They do have more to go, but I really do hope Bose is gonna lower their price on the smart sound bar, because honestly, no one's gonna be able to tell the difference between the 600 and the smart sound bar. And honestly, if you get the 600 way cheaper, get the 600. So with that, thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below and please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help support our channel. And I'll catch you next time. This is Dave with the French Glow signing off. Bye, bye, bye.